Hey, Solus, Agent Solar Vet Rice here with another week of crowdfunded games uh, that are solvable. Um, please check out my previous week's games that I had up. I put up a bit late on Saturday, um, but this week back onto the Wednesday um, train, if I can. Uh, the first one I've got for the week, and it's actually one from Backer Kit, uh, which has been the first one for a long time. Uh, it's One Deck Dungeon, Relics of the Forge, another expansion for that game by Asmati Games and uh, designed by Chris Cheslick. Uh, it's doing really well. See so if thousand dollars of back out of the fifty thousand required. It's got over a thousand backers, so doing well. A brand new full expansion, Forge Hungers for Fuel, and it will reward your efforts with great power if you satisfy it. All right, what have we got here? So uh, it's a new standalone expansion. Um, and if you're new to One Deck Dungeon, uh, quite a quick solvable one. I think it's even two player. No, um, as in for this one, I'm assuming it is as well. Um, Game, uh, dice game that you, you flip over cards, you go through the dungeon, you flip over one out of four cards, and you try and roll dice and use skills to manipulate your dice to try and uh, place such dice on enemies or traps. Um, we'll see what's different here. It says here new encounters, new mechanics, new heroes. The things might be slightly different. Uh, we have created the One Deck Dungeon Vault, which contains every One Deck Dungeon set. So you might be able to get everything you've previous as well. Uh, it says, yep, still says one to two player copy of Dungeon Crawler. And uh, the, the cool thing about this little game is you, once you do um, place your dice and defeat the enemy or, or take take the wounds or take your, um, take the abilities that it does to you, you get to grab it and you can either use it as experience or as loot um, for a skill or for like an upgrade to your, like in this case here, a mended dice. There's different ways you can use the, the loot cards, which is really neat for a small game. Looks like it's got the same sort of idea. Yes, unfinished boxes give you health. You can either use it, as I just said, for experience, for loot, for skill, or for upgrading your, your amount of dice that you throw. Uh, what's new? Is there anything what's new? There's a campaign. Yeah, there's like a little campaign you can follow through. Uh, like you tick off certain things and give you like certain extra skills. Uh, new expansion introduces two new concepts, and they're both in the, in the title of the expansion, Relics and the Forge. Sadly, the mechanic of the final word of would require at least 200 miniatures, and they wouldn't fit in the box. <laughs> nice. Uh, we've got all new hero dungeons and encounters. There's 44 encounter cards, four heroes, four dungeons, eight relics, 30 dice. <laughs> Storage. Dice tokens here can be spent at the start of an encounter. Ooh, so is that new? Ultimate by spending a crystal, you can activate a relic's most powerful ability. So this is now ultimates. Okay. Is that reward table spend fuel? Yes, yeah, so that's a new mechanic to the game. The black seven can be placed in a box of any color. Ooh. Okay. That's new heroes: Smith, Thrasher, Flamberge, and Shade. Uh, that's right, there's four sets in there because there's like a sci-fi-ish one. I think. I've only got the base set. Um, but yeah, no, it's nice from my point of view. It's not a, quite a nice, quick, um, soluble travel game for sure. And there's the shipping prices. All right. Uh, next I've got for the week is Herna Norman. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. Uh, the reprint of it, which I wasn't sure if it had re released or not, but reprint and expansion and more. Enter the Celtic other world of Herna Norman. Uh, doing fairly well. Twenty four thousand back Australian out of four hundred fifty six backers. And um, this game, I've noticed it on Gen Con feeds and stuff that it come up. People playing it, demoing it, um, had good feedback. Uh, solo was uh, Green Games Guilds thirteen created. Um, this game here, so for retail is five dollars. Uh, print play. You can even do a print play version. Module expansions, $19. Deluxe is 39 49 for Deluxe Expansion. 59 for All In, which is a pretty good price, to be honest. Um, uh, this game, we're excited to announce the reprint. This Gen Con saw a very first time we had a line at the booth climbing for our New Year's title. After a quick sellout, we are through to reprint, expand, and turn on the universe. So two new editions. 
Dude, what's in the box? You get heaps of cards. Terra size and solar cards. So solar mode enabled. And this is what is that how it plays? Is it like that? There's new expansions. How to play. Send your storage arrows on a journey to retrieve and encounter card when placing them next to desired cards in the other world. Select a card from your hand and add it to your saga, which is a grid of cards in front of you. So is it like a tableau engine builder? I can't remember when I went through the Gen Con stuff. Uh, shape your saga by changing the values and colors of your encounter cards through card effects. After five rounds, score each row according to the rules on its corresponding yes card. Okay, so it's kind of... Yeah, so you've got to place it... It reminds me of kind of like role play, like a little logic puzzle. I know that's a dice game, but this one, more card game. You've got to get the right numbers in the right order. Is that how that works? This one has the right colors. Yeah, okay. So it's like a little puzzle to try and solve before the end of the five rounds. Strategic and tactical decisions is great. Okay. It's a solid playthrough here. Fantastic. We'll be checking that one out. There's a rule book. Tabletop Simulator has it. It's relatively well priced, I think. Achieving fees to be determined for the expansions, but every other level, you have it right here. Great, let's move on. Next one of the week is, uh, yet again, the new solid game of the month. They're really hammering these out. I believe they've started to deliver on the first one, the Dyson Crusoe as well, um, which people are talking about. Um, this one's backed already to, to a funding level, 266% funded. 548 backers, seventh inning. Um, I'm assuming it's a baseball game. Build your team and perfect your starting lineup as you try to win the world championship in this puzzly drafting game. One to two players. So it's 30 minutes. Uh, so you're doing your draft and bus baseball players, folks and things. And there's a unique solo card drafting and dice chucking baseball game where you get to. Be the whole organization, GM, manager, and players as you build your team, set your lives, and then play out the final innings on a few key games each season. All right. So if you're into your baseball, or you're into like some sporty card games, sounds like something for you. Special jewel mode. Cool 90s card frames. So kind of like trading cards. Hmm. So is it twenty four dollars for the base? The print and play for five. And there's a video of how to play. Shipping costs. I mean, Justin Schroeder is your designer for this week. Gabe is the one that's uh, the publisher behind those. No stretch goals. Yeah, fair enough. I, I don't mind that actually. Just, you know what you're getting. All right, let's keep moving on. Next one I've got is uh, print and play. It's called Transcribe the Art of Alchemy. Uh, just over half funded with 42 backers. Uh, was it this programmed movement roll and write? Okay, Real Magic Studios, the first credit. And it's a $7 game. Um, it's an Australian game, by the way, too. Wollongong, Australia. <laughs> Background Race against your fellow alchemist to craft the Philosopher's Stone in plenty of places, the most renowned alchemist of the age. So one to 12 players, 30 to 60 minutes. Ooh. Okay. Uh, players assume the role of alchemist, studying the art of transmutation and mastering the alchemical process. Each turn players will sometimes activate their transmutation engine. Okay. Okay, print and play, what's included. Uh, how to play. The player rolls a die. Everyone uses this value. Players may modify the value that they personally use via engine upgrades. Players choose to activate either the row or column of their engine. Okay, so you can either do that one. Row or column of their engine. And choose a star on the map to start moving from. From the chosen star, players perform the move of their row or column, then draw a star and resolve the symbol it landed on. Okay. So what was it? Bottom right, bottom right, bottom right, bottom right, down. Didn't they move three or did they start there? I guess they started there. 
One, two, three. Okay. If a player resolves a process symbol, they gain renown in the medal needed to upgrade the engine or advance the magnum opus. If a player resolves a base element symbol, they add the corresponding movement direction to any empty space in their engine. Okay. Kind of unique. Couldn't play. Are you looking for a little more crunch in your role, right? So I'm, I'm adding more. Whether you prefer to play solo or enjoy gaming with a large group, Transco has you covered. Rapid delivery, they're promising. Emerging creators, you've got on them. Well, it looks interesting for a print play for sure. Playing solo. Solo mode that's straightforward to play. I face off against the legendary Nicholas Flamel and prove yourself as the world's greatest alchemist. <laughs> interesting. Great. Right, next one. I've got his Koala Let Rescue Club. Uh, and his brand new print at home game in the zone of Sushi Go. Um, it's doing really well. Oh my god, one thousand one hundred forty-nine backers. Eleven days ago, it was a postmark games and Joey games. Their fifth created. Five pound to get it. One to one hundred players. Eh? In this rollover game, you'll plant new trees for cars to live in, and then rehome them safely. Each turn, a die roll determines which configuration of trees or koalas you can draw. Okay. Use your own dice and pencil. Uh, sorry, roll a die. A four. Four lets you do that. So if, and it lets you do that in any pattern that looks things that way, that way, that way. Okay. One player rolls the die and the result shows a shape that will all players will use this term. It seems to be a common mechanic, isn't it? These roll rights. <laughs> roll the die and everyone uses that number, but they could choose that what how they're going to use that number. A shape can be rotated or flipped, but it must always fit with the area you are drawing in. Yep. The Tetris style. In later turns, you'll be able to rehome quails, but to start with, you'll need to plant some trees. Ah, oh, so if you circle the tree, then you circle the koala. If you have trees planted, you may instead choose to use the roll shape to rehome koalas. Yep. Cascading bonuses. So if you fill out a row and column, you get the bonus. Okay. Okay, so the drip has got to play through of it. You can play solo. Let's try and complete merit badges in the first half of the game and see how your score stacks up. Cool. All right, next one. Let's keep going. We've got Raptor Fight. That's three backers so far, so it needs a bit of help on this one. Uh, boss bot battle card game for one to two players. Uh, first created. By Jay Orman. Uh, so we've got a print play for ten dollars. Uh, single copy of Reptify for twenty five. Uh, prints with the game forty dollars. The t shirt forty five. The early bird all in. Alrighty. So it's got one to two players, twenty to forty minutes, thirteen plus. One to two player boss battle card game. Takes turns in a cooperative duel against the vicious and cunning old Utah Raptor. Okay. Let's beat the beast and save the baby daughter. If you want to create the same visceral overruling feel of dread and desperation as the amazing battles I've had in many wonderful boss battle games I've had. So they want to make it really tense. <clears throat> yeah, well, most of inspire me are the big box miniature games with Raptor Fighters tiny and almost all cards are dead of those miniature games, especially the confrontations found within them. Yeah, so they're trying to make it a bit more affordable to a boss battler. Take turns drawing action cards from the player's deck. And using those actions to attack their prey or defend against the raptor's attacks. As missed attacks injuries pile up, they are added to the player's deck as exhaustion's cards. You need to defeat the raptor before exhaustion and injury become insurmountable. Okay. So it's kind of like a survival boss battle card game. Draw phase, player attack phase. Attack rolls. D6 represents the player's attack. The D6 represents the Raptor's defense. If the player's D6 roll plus or minus any modifiers is greater than the Raptor's defense roll, then resolve Raptor's cards defense stats using the modified D6 result. Then discard the Raptor's card. Okay. If the D10 is greater than attack is blocked, add one miss exhaustion card to the player's discard pile. Hmm. 
Okay. Then after attacks, discard phase. All right, so we'll give a bit of a quick rundown how it works. Some components, what's in the game. No stretch goals, that's fair enough. Just want to say thank you for taking the time to look through. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I mean, obviously Kickstarter still has a lot of small independent people that are trying to get something going. Alrighty, so if that's a up to your early bust bottle card game, give that a check out. Uh, the next one we've got is The Ferryman. It's a solo print and play post apocalyptic adventure. It's just funded with 24 backers. Not Bird Games, they're first created. $7. Uh, what do you get? A vehicle record sheet, rule book, map sheet. A few stretch goals, playing the game, action phase, you travel, explore, you can camp. Threat phase. It's a playthrough. <laughs> All righty. Okay. Be keen to check out. Maybe that will be probably the most helpful, the playthrough video right there. All righty. Next one I've got. So on to, uh, excuse me, on to Game Crafter. Nothing on right now, but just a heads up coming up soon. There's a uh, Eternal Mist Curse of the Forsaken Forest coming out uh, in a couple of days' time. Uh, that is meant to be a cult survival game, so maybe perhaps check that one out when it comes up for crowd sale. Other things upcoming, uh, game fan wise, there's an expansion for Bloodstones, um, which has a solo mode looks in it's been done by David Turksey. The Fisherman, um, very similar to well, <laughs> in theme looks things to that. Um, uh, what was it called? There's a game recently that was about fishing, fishing for Eldritch horrors and stuff. There's Norseman, the Python Wilds with a, a reprint. Um, that was uh, that was a game that looked like it was very intriguing. Um, I'm sure they're back once people have to, got it delivered to them and see if they've got a bit more buzz for their next campaign. Army 86 RPG, there's a zombie horde game, and some dice. And I think that's about it for the week, guys. So, thanks for tuning in. Uh, catch me next week for another one of these. Crash, you get me first. Play solo.